round football, and we start with the Big 12 with TCU trying to still and stay in touch with the national championship picture, trying to stay ahead of everybody in the Big 12. Uh, I saw uh, someone brought this up to me on a direct message. Do you feel like there's any kind of a, uh, in fact, it was brought up yesterday, any kind of a concern that this could be a trap game? I don't think they play like trap games. I don't, I'm not saying everybody doesn't get into that. I think TCU is on a mission, not because of the standings that came out. I just think that's the way they play under Sonny Dykes. Yeah, but they, you know, they, they have played fast and loose at times, and, 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 and they have fallen behind in games. Uh, but they, they always manage to find a way to fight back. I just know that the loss for Tech last week was not indicative of their other losses in that they really did stop fighting in that game for the first time all year. And I, I would not, if I'm going to play Tech, I would not want to play them the week after their worst loss. But I still think TCU is much better and should easily win the game, especially since they're at home and Tech has not won on the road this year. But uh, if I'm... If I'm picking a time to play Tech, it wouldn't be right after they got thumped because just because of the way they've emotionally been in almost every other game this season. Uh, I think it's a trap game in uh, in one definition and maybe not in the the other. I think I don't think that TCU is going to be caught off guard, uh, I, but I do think this is a game they could lose if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think it's a trap in that like they're just walking into this like ho hum, we're just going to destroy Tech and go about our business and be unbeaten. Uh, I think they're smarter than that. I mean, it's Sunny freaking Dykes. I mean, <laughs> who who knows better about Texas Tech than him? At yeah. the, I mean, really. So uh, yeah, I don't think that he's taking Tech lightly or or thinking that they're you know going to get an easy W. So I, I don't see them being surprised, but I, I could see them having their hands full. I definitely think they will have their hands full for at least a portion of this game. To what extent, I don't know. And like as much as that game last week seems like it was one sided, and it was uh, for the most part, it was still a one score game. You know, basically going in the fourth quarter, right? So. I mean, it was not like, you know, as well as Baylor played, it was not like they had just blown the doors off and, you know, the whole second half was a was a coast. It was a third quarter that all of a sudden you had to get serious and try to then find a way to go win the game, and they did. They they did that by, you know, blowing out Tech in the fourth quarter 21 to nothing. Uh, but, you know, prior to that, like, they, for as much as that felt like Baylor dominated, it took them two scores to basically make it a, a game, you know, in the third quarter. So... They'll hang around. They'll be a threat anytime their offense is on the field. I don't think this is the dominant TCU defense that just squashes people and they're going to just choke, you know, Tech and, and not allow them to, you know, score many points. I do think Tech's going to be able to, to light up the scoreboard a little bit. But, you know, TCU is going to be able to, to do that as well. I think for Tech, the problem is they gave up a lot of explosive plays. And Baylor hit on some last week, and they do turn the ball over at a really rapid clip. And so, you know, if they can protect the football, I think you still worry about those explosive plays with TCU because they're just so dynamic. But, uh, to, yeah, to answer your question, I'm very interested by this one. I don't have, like, upset watch going on, but, you know, talking about that, I, I would not be surprised by it, quite frankly. I do think that TCU's got to be careful tomorrow. I think they're the, clearly the better team. I believe they'll win, but I do think they need to – to be smart about how they play and, and not, you know, be too loose with this one. Lee Buttercup on the chat room just brought this up. And one of the things about the Big 12 that has been fun is there's been a couple of nice stories that have come out from teams that were thought to be perhaps the bottom half of the, of the league. But uh, Oklahoma's a three-and-a-half point favorite at home against Baylor. Texas is a two-and-a-half point favorite in Manhattan against Kansas State. Kansas is a one-point favorite now against Oklahoma State, and that thing flipped. And then TCU's an eight-point favorite, which really is its a lot, but it's not a lot. And that's how close and tied in these teams are in the Big 12. And I didn't get the West Virginia and, and their game with Iowa State, and I think that's pretty tight as well. So it's another weekend where Lord knows what might happen. Yeah, it's uh... – the Big 12 is the definition, and maybe by extension, the Pac-12 and the middle parts of the ACC uh, after Clemson uh, are all the definition of why you need to expand the playoff because, you know, uh, you don't need to take your league out of it with with three weeks left if they just lose one game in a good conference. Like, those should, should not be punished. So, because uh, it is. I mean, TCU could lose this week. And if they do lose, I will think nothing different of them than I thought unless Tech beats them by 35, which isn't going to happen. So, I... I partially agree with you. I, I don't know that they have a real national championship contender in this yeah. group. Um, but 
two reasons why I partially agree with you. It's the most competitive and entertaining league. And I know some SEC fan or something will crow about, you know, no, we are whatever. I'm not saying that the Big 12 has the most top-tier teams. I don't know that they have a legit four-team playoff national championship contender. I, I don't know that because I don't yeah. think TCU is going unbeaten. So I, I don't think that they have a top-four team. But I do think that if you win this conference, you deserve a crack at at least getting a chance. If you played in the best conference, top to bottom, that was tough week in and week out, and you emerged from that and you're the champion, why shouldn't you deserve a chance at, a, at the other championship? If you played in the best league, arguably, yeah. okay, you took a loss so you don't deserve it suddenly? Like, no, because you went through a grinder week after week after week. You didn't have Vanderbilt on your schedule or, you know, or someone like that. You didn't have a break where you played – uh, Southern Southwestern Baptist in like week 10, like, some, you know, and I'm not saying that that makes those other teams lesser. I'm just saying that like you had to nine straight weeks, no breaks, all gas, no breaks to borrow from Sark. And you emerge from that. And then you go in a title game against somebody that you already played. You deserve a shot in my opinion. So that's why the expanded playoff, I think makes sense. If it was just the four team, yeah, I don't know that the Big 12 has somebody that's deserving. TCU certainly will be if they're unbeaten. They they better damn well be in that thing if they go through this meat grinder and they, they stay completely unscathed. But even if they weren't to, why wouldn't you want to see TCU get a crack at this thing? Because they lost in week 10 to Texas Tech by a field goal or something, so they're just off the table now? Like I think that's, I think that's BS. Um, and I also think that when you look at a team like – and I don't necessarily believe this in full, but Baylor – like, what if they go on a run to close the year? And I like they're not the best example because they've had some dumb losses, like or some some bad stumbles. But just saying, somebody who picks up steam along the way. What if you reel off like ten straight wins, and you are by the end of the year, you're one of the best teams in the country? Because I certainly think they're better than they were four weeks ago. How good they'll be four weeks from now? They might just go through this month and beat TCU, Texas, Oklahoma, and uh, and who am I missing? TCU, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas State. Kansas State. If they do that, like they'd be red hot, and then go play in a Big Twelve title game, and they win that. Like I know the odds of that are very low, but they could, in theory, like that would be a red. Well, they will though. They will starting when they expand. Yeah. But you're not talking about Baylor with three losses this year. No, I'm talking about yeah, the expanded yeah, playoff yeah, and why yeah. it makes sense. Well, they will. Because, yeah, yeah, they well, will. yeah, they will eventually, but but that's why it makes sense for those who say, no, we don't need more teams in the play. No, that's exactly why we need some more teams in the playoff, and that won't always be the case or the instance, but that's that's something you have really no chance of. Now you have a chance at that, and I think that's great because a two-loss early in the season, no shot whatsoever. Now – yeah, it might not week in and week out mean exactly as much. It's all do or die in week number three, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be do or die every single week, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah so. and, and I also think when they when they expand it, one of the other things going to happen is there's not going to be any more. I know they had this one thing where there was like a two and a half, three week layoff, which I hate, but they need to get rid of the month like the month long layoff will go away. So you could, yeah, you know, Nick Saban might have a buy to think about you, but he doesn't have three weeks to sit in the lab. And, you know, invent things, you, you're going to have to respond quicker. So you have those chances that'll be different. And that's why a three loss team that is on a, like a nine game tear could very easily go in and win the thing because, man, they came together. Um, the, the fresh, the two freshman studs that they expected didn't hit in the first four games, but they hit in the last four. And those things can all happen. So it makes the thing more organic, which is why. You know, you have a conference like the T like the, the Big 12 that is a meat grinder every week. You should reward a team for only losing one game in that, right? Yeah, but that's where you have to be smart and, and, and make sure you get a couple of nice national wins, mm -hmm. too, if you have those opportunities in non-conference play. But down the road, if it, when it win, not if, it, when it expands, you even have opportunities despite what you be, may be the Baylor loss to Brigham Young or someone else. Uh, Jacob.